Currently at ED Films, we are working on a project called Giant Bear. This project involves really complex After Effects scenes with camera moves and 3D character animation done in Maya. The difficulty of this is trying to take the camera moves that we have built in After Effects and time it with character animation. So I tried a couple of methods and what I found so far seems to be working the best is I rendered a draft video of the whole scene really low quality. You can see none of the plants are moving and the lighting has these big square chunks on it. I rendered that out just to get a, a sense of the camera move and the timing. And then I went through and just started drawing on top of the footage in Photoshop to actually lay out the seals movements and sort of plan the scene. Once I have the animation finished, I can export that and use it as a reference track in Maya to animate my character too. I could be very exact with it or I can just sort of leave it on the side and use it more as reference and not be so exact, but just worry more about the broad arcs and the timing. While I'd say Photoshop is not ideal for this kind of work, it is nice to have it as an option, especially if you don't have any other programs that you can use. Once I set up my shortcut keys and everything else, I actually found it. The process was pretty intuitive and fast, and you could work around all the limitations. I'll just show you really quick what I did to bring in the footage. So it's pretty easy. You can just open footage straight in Photoshop. Let's go to renders here and I have this shot one draft. I have a draft and I, it, the shot got split up into three parts. So I can just open the file and Photoshop just opens it as a movie movie file. So at the resolution to it. So now what we have is we have the, the clip runs to the end. So I can just add more. I can just import more. I think I can just go right here and we import an, an, uh, the next one. And that just gets popped right at the end here. So it seamlessly strings them together. And then I also hit the end here again. So I'm just going to add another clip. And then we have shot two. And it just sort of stitches the whole thing together. So the next thing I had to do was just create a new video layer. So you go down here and you go to video layers and you go new blank video layer. And you need to find this. Right now this is in the video group. I don't want it in this video group. So I'm just going to pull it up. And we need to find where the clip starts. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but... So I'm just going to pull it back here. So now I have this whole clip. And what I can do in this layer is I can actually draw on it um, using whatever I want. Now, one of the problems with it is it's only going to draw one frame and it's going to disappear. In the layer sections here with the video layer, you can um, duplicate frames and you can delete frames and you can insert blank frames. And these are the three that I, I, I kind of use the most. So I actually assigned them hotkey combos. So I had to use these really kind of elaborate combinations because a lot of the key combinations were already taken. So to add new ones, you just go to keyboard shortcuts and you go up here and you go to layer and we go and we find the video layer section. So it's like down here somewhere. Here it is, video layers. So I can just clear this shortcut out and I can go control shift alt D and it drops it in there right there and then we can just say accept. If you do do a command that already exists it will warn you so if I were to do this again and I were supposed to control shift S it tells me it's already in use and I just want to kind of undo that or not accept it and just I'll leave it the way it is so accept okay and this makes the process a lot easier because if I want to duplicate frames I can press control D I can duplicate this out and so now this is longer and then on the, my next frame I can draw again and I'll have a new frame and I can duplicate that out as many times as I need. I've been finding if I want to shift things over, I can insert a blank frame, which is control shift alt D. I can just move things that way, or I can go here and control, control alt X and just delete frames. So it's one way to move things around. I can't find a way to just click and drag these clips, these clip sections. I'm not sure why I can't. Um, they have they look like you could click and drag them but you can't you can if you drag the whole thing i found this way works fine especially for layout because i'm just doing straight ahead stuff and uh, drawing the seal in um, the other thing is the onion skinning we just go up here and we just turn on onion skinning and i set it to screen because multiply was too extreme and i just did for frames before so you can have frames before and after so you can see the incoming and outgoing frame but i just did frames before just to keep it easy so I put it to zero and also so there's not so much information. So now if I go here and I draw a new shape, you can see it. I can do a new shape. One of the ways I was doing it is just drawing my frames on ones and then actually just after I kind of figure out my cycle, I'm just going in and duplicating those. So control D, duplicating as many as I need. And that's sort of slowing down the animation. It's pretty primitive. This isn't ideal, 
but it works for me if you just have photoshop it's it's an, it's easy enough once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy to work through and again it's just layout animation i'm just blocking the scene trying to figure it out okay so i hope this video helps you out i will continue to share updates and more little videos when i can thanks a lot for all of your support and for continuing to watch our videos Thank you.